Hi, I'm Paul Dye. Welcome back to Kit Plains Firewall Forward, sponsored by Tempest. Today, we're going to talk about examining your oil filter. This is one method that works. When we talked about changing the oil on the engine, we said that it's fundamentally the same as doing the oil change on your car. Um, and it is. You drain oil, you change the filter, you put more oil in. But with an airplane engine, we tend to do a little bit more work after we've changed that, just to make sure that things are in good shape. Why? Because if the engine quits on your car, you coast over to the side of the road and call AAA. If the engine quits on your airplane, it's a little more dangerous than that. You need to make sure you find a place to land. So, one of the things we like to do is to use the oil filter as an indication of the health of the engine, to see if it's making metal, to see if there's anything that's coming apart inside the engine. We're going to do that by cutting the oil filter open and seeing what's inside. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about oil analysis. And that's just something where you take a sample of oil, you send it off, when it comes back they tell you if there's any, any microscopic uh, particles of metal in it. So the first thing we need to do is we're going to need to cut open our oil filter. Now this is a, a new one, we're not going to cut this one open. We're going to cut the one open that was just taken off this airplane. And we're going to have to do that using a special tool and our vise. So we'll go over to the vise. All right, we're going to cut open this oil filter, and I find that to be easily, uh, easily done if I, if I use a vise, because if you're trying to do it freehand out on the bench, you end up with oil everywhere. So we've, we've tightened that up in the vise. And then you want to pick up an oil filter cutting tool. This one's by Tempest. It's a very nice solid tool, so it shouldn't have a lot of flexibility. Um, and it, the, we, we have the, the cutting blade here, which spins, and then we have the centering tool, which is going to go down inside the, the female uh, spot in the, in the filter. And if you have the other kind of filter, you can pull the pin, pull that out. This goes over the male spud, and, uh, and it works just great. So let me put this back in, and we'll insert it into the, uh, into the filter. You tighten the blade up against the, the uh, can, and then you spin it around. And you just take a little bit more tightening each time as it goes around until it's cut a nice slot. Take your time. It's going to, at some point, break through. You can see that it's scoring a line in there. We're not quite punctured. There we punctured. Around it goes and it's off. A little bit opening here at the back end. Okay, so we're fully free. Loosen that up, take the tool off, and off comes the base. It's a good idea to have some rags handy so you don't make a mess. Okay, with that, we're going to take this back over to the bench and we'll uh, see what we've got inside. All right, back over on the bench, you want to definitely have some kind of a pan because you're going to end up making a mess if you don't. You don't want to just do this on your workbench. So we've got a little foil pan. The disposable ones are great. Do, spend, a, spend 89 cents every time you do an oil filter and that's okay. So we've got the oil filter, we've cut the bottom off, we're going to take the little flapper valve out and put that aside. Um, you'll notice that there's a little bit of debris on here from cutting, and it's mostly paint, but you don't want to mix that in with what you're looking at just in case it scares you that you have a, a sliver of aluminum. You, want, you don't want something that came from the filter itself. Now this is going to be messy because we've still got oil in here. Matter of fact, we're going to take this bit of oil, which is still trapped, and I'm going to dump that uh, into our, our waste oil container so that we don't uh, make a further mess. Every time you do this, you, you find out new ways to not make a mess or to make a mess. So we're just kind of going to let that drain a little bit while we... Uh, while we uh, sop up the excess. And then once it's drained down, we'll come back and we'll cut that open. Okay, we're back. We let that drain a little while. And now uh, we're going to cut the filter element out of its uh, container. So there's, down here there's one rib, which is metal. You want to start just on the side of that. And then on either edge, you want to cut that out and go all the way around. You kind of need a longish blade. 
Uh, sometimes I keep an old kitchen knife handy for this. We'll see if we can do that with this blade. One side, and then we're going to have to do the other side. What you don't want to do is put it into a saw or something like that and end up creating potential for medical metal particles, which will scare you because that's what we're going to be looking for in this element are uh, our particles of metal. Now we're going to go ahead and, and cut across and basically you just want to do whatever it takes to get this filter element out of here. Don't cut yourself when you do this because it's hard to explain to the ER why you've got motor oil in your wound. Okay, so now we've got this cut and we can go ahead and pull it out. I'm just going to remove it from the metal edges. And remember, we're not going to use this over again, so you don't need to be particularly gentle with it. You just don't want to introduce any foreign contamination into the process as you go through here. Now you're going to have a fair amount of oil on it and in it because it is completely saturated with oil. And a lot of times, a lot of guys will put this into a vise and squeeze the oil out of it. They'll fold it back into an accordion and put it in a vise and squeeze the oil out of it. Um, I don't usually go the, quite that far, uh, but I do like to examine in the whole examine the whole filter paper all the way through. So I'm just taking all this out and, and we're going to look for particles. Okay. So now we're just going to take a look at one side all the way through. We've looked at that piece. I'm just going to look at both sides. I don't see anything there. And what are we looking for? First off, we're looking for little shiny pieces. Little shiny pieces are probably going to be aluminum. Uh, they can be coming from a piston or a few things in the engine. Um, if we, uh, The other thing that you're probably going to find are little chunks of black dark matter. And if you find little, little pieces of black, what you want to do is you want to put those down on your bench here and just hit those with something like a edge of a screwdriver or your knife blade, most likely they will shatter. And if that happens, they're just little chunks of carbon. Probably came off of, a, off of a valve seat or something like that. They're not a problem. If you find significant number of, of chunks that, that um, won't shatter, and they're not particularly shiny, they could be steel. And the, the thing then to do is to get a magnet and see if they're magnetic. If they stick to the magnet, you've got your, your engines making, making steel or iron parts. And, uh, and that starts to become a problem. So how much is a problem? Well, generally if you've got something that'll cover your, your, your thumbnail, that's a lot of metal from the inside of, a, of an engine. I'm still looking here to see if I run into anything, and this one is really clean. It's a virtually new engine, uh, but it's, been, it's had at least one oil change already, so the, the stuff that we'd expect from the brand new engine, the wear, is gone. This one's in really good shape. So um, that's kind of it. If you, if you get a few particles, but, but it's not excessive, it won't cover a, a thumbnail, you probably don't have a real problem. Go ahead and fly it some more. Check it next time. You really should do this every time you get an oil change because we spend an awful lot of money on these engines and we want to make sure that they, uh, that they last. That's really all there is to checking through your oil filter. Um, as long as you don't have a lot of material in there, uh, you're going to be fine. While the oil filter itself, and we also remember check the oil suction screen for really big chunks, the oil filter itself is going to show us if we have visible chunks of metal. Um, Things can go on in your engine that are, are happening down at the, at, the, at the microscopic level, so to speak, down at, the, at the, the molecular level. And a way to tell what's going on is to send off a sample of oil to an oil analysis firm. You take a sample midstream, so you start draining a little oil, you, you stop, you take a, take a, take a sample, and then, you, and then you finish draining the oil out of the engine. You put this in a special container, the special mailing thing. This is going to Blackstone Oil Analysis Labs. And what you're going to do is they're going to send you back a, uh, a mass spectrometer type report which says we've seen tin, we see aluminum, we see, we see iron at these levels. 
What's important to remember about oil analysis is that it's a great trend tool. It will give you an idea over time if your engine is normally showing these levels of the various metals and then all of a sudden something starts to spike. And then they can then you can tell if it's iron it's coming from a certain spot. If it's aluminum it might be coming from something else. If it's a different material it might be coming from the bearings. What you don't want to do is panic over a single oil analysis result. Anything can happen. You might have taken it uh, in a contaminated jug and gotten a little bit of, 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 of metallic uh, uh, material in there. Um, if it's a brand new engine, it's going to be putting out metal like you wouldn't believe because things are breaking in. I don't do analysis on engines uh, until they've got about 100 hours on them as a rule. The other thing to remember is that I've been working on engines a, a long, long time and I don't think I've ever pulled an engine based on a single oil analysis report. What they will always tell you is run it some more, do another sample, and see if that was an anomalous sample. So it's not sufficient in and of itself to, to, to do a major tear down an engine because you get one bad report. Um, but it is an indication that you want to look at what's going on. And the first thing they'll tell you probably is check the oil filter for particles and then put in fresh oil, run it some more, and take another sample. So that's really the story in looking at the oil system on our airplane. Make sure that we don't have particles forming, we don't have a, a wear problem. Join us next time on Kit Planes Firewall Forward, sponsored by Tempest. I'm going to give it a minute, so... <laughs> Omar's in frame. Mark, <laughs> that's right. ventilated. So we've been shooting for like a week now, all right? And this is dumb, so. But it's cool on us, me. Get pants that don't have ventilation holes. You're welcome. <laughs>